Welcome to Theotrade. This is Don Kaufman. In this video, we are going to be talking about time decay. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, time decay. It's theta. What is theta? The daily whittling down of an option's value. So why am I going to talk a little bit about time decay? Well, for the most part, if you've traded some options at this point, whether you have bought them or sold them, you've experienced a degree okay, of time decay. I mean, that's one of the things you face every single day inside of options is, you know, theta. So again, theta, it's, it's the Greek for decay. But when you're looking at theta on an options chain, <clears throat> theta, first of all, it's an estimate. It's, um, it's actually quoted on a per share basis. So in this case, I'll show you exactly where it's located on Thinkorswim. You click one of these information layouts here in the trade tab, come down to options, theoreticals, and Greeks. And what do you do? You go to theta. Again, theta, it's the daily whittling down of an options value. Kind of think of it as in this case, if I'm looking at these uh, SPX, yes, I'm using the SPX in this example, the granddaddy of all the options trading products. But uh, Theta in this case, it's got a little minus sign, it says 66 cents. Of course, the minus sign is always going to be in front of it because for the most part, if you were to buy this option, you're going to see about, and I said about, 66 cents of decay today. Now, the reason I really wanted to bring up theta is that there's so many myths surrounding like how options effectively decay. If you look at the 17-day options, they decay at 66 cents a day. If you look at the four-day options, you're like, these are the exact same options, right? So I'm just making this extremely clear that, you know, uh, we'll even knock down the number of strikes here. We're looking at the 2080s, okay, with four days remaining, and the 2080s with what? 17 days remaining. Uh, and again, I always like to mention it's the exact same option here, right? The uh, the 2080s, the 2080s. The only difference is 17 days remaining and four days remaining. So you're seeing that the four day option is decaying at a much steeper rate than is the what? Than is the 17 day option. Okay, and you're like, yeah, that's great. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Most people recognize that the closer you come to expiration, the faster the option decays. So it kind of looks like a decay graph. It's like, whoa, and, it, and it, you know, over here, the option is worth what? You know, 20 bucks down here. It's worth like zero, and it's just decaying faster and faster and faster. The roller coaster just is out of control until you basically hit the wall, which is zero. All right, and that happens sometimes when you buy options. Great. So that's like, you know, the obvious. But the, the thing that most people don't really get is that decay does not, does not come out like on a linear basis like you believe it does. All right, meaning that it doesn't really mean like a $1.25. You're like, if you sold this option, you're like, you're getting a buck 25. Or if you bought the option, you're like, oh, I lost a $1.25. Yeah, that's per share. How many contracts are you going to trade? You're like, I traded one contract. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you just lost $125, okay? Because that would be your aggregated theta. But it doesn't really work that way. And I'm going to tell you why it doesn't work that way. Because theta, which is time decay, is inextricably linked to implied volatility. So what I'm getting at over here, and this is where, you know, oof, careful, because it's about to get pretty deep in here, the implied volatility. What's going to happen is this. The reason theta doesn't kind of work like you think it will, like you're like, I was expecting a dollar twenty-four to come out. Okay, what came out? Nothing! In fact, there are days when you would expect, okay, decay to come out of an option. But the exact opposite happens. And how does that happen? Because implied volatility could go up or down. Okay? And if implied volatility, for instance, goes up, let's say implied volatility goes from 13 on this option to 14. You're like, okay. So if implied volatility goes from 13 to 14, this option, okay, may not lose $1.24 of its value. The option itself, 
will actually be influenced by something called Vega. You're like, oh, stop it. You're killing me over here. Vega is an option sensitivity to changes in implied volatility. You're like, well, what's that again? Basically, it means this. The volatility, if it went from 13 to 14, this Vega number, which is basically 95 cents, okay, does what? It actually increases this option from like $9.30, and it's going to increase it, okay, by about 94 cents. So now think about this for a second, because this is where like, you know, people's minds are getting blown right now. So if volatility goes up, and I'm going to draw it out for you over here, and I'm going to draw it right on top of the screen, but <clears throat> this Vega, if this Vega goes up, it's actually taking this option and it's adding 94 cents into it. So let's just call it like, you know, it takes the option from, you know, hey, we can use a mid price. It takes it from like $9.30 and it adds about, let's just call it a buck into it. And it takes the option. Now the option is worth what? $10 and let's say 25 cents. So this option actually increases in value. Now forget about stock price movement. No, we don't need no stinking stock price movement in here. So the option itself increases in value because the volatility goes up. How does volatility goes up? It, there's more demand. People demand options. Why? Because there's more risk. Why? Because the SPX is down 20 points when I'm recording this. But then theta comes in. And theta... Okay, let's say a day passes, takes this option down about a buck twenty-five. So what's the option going to be worth in the end? Nine dollars. So you got volatility going up, but then you have theta going down. And this is your theta, and it's going down. So what they are is inversely proportional to one another, and it, it totally blows people's minds because as volatility goes up, but time is moving forward, and the option in the end could be worth nine dollars. And this is why theta, it's, it's not linear. We all know that theta is, you know, decaying faster the closer we're coming to expiration. But in the end, you have to recognize that, okay, the option's worth $9, okay? And if you went out and you sold that option in any way, shape, or form, do not expect the theta to come out like you see it on your screen, even though Okay, even though you see the option and it says it should decay by a buck twenty four a day, you got to know that that's not going to happen. And why is that not going to happen? Because volatility is going up, volatility is going down, it's going left, it's going right. Time decay is moving forward. Okay, you can estimate what you think the options burn rate is going to be, but you can't nail it down because you don't know precisely what the volatility is going to be the very next day. So thanks a lot, everybody, for joining us here at Theo Trade. I hope you guys enjoyed a little bit about time decay. This is Don Kaufman. Be back with some more free videos.